Um, I know last week we started talking about um, mortgages, refinancing during COVID. We also talked with Kim Pierce about staging. Today we are talking with Jim from Galaxy Property Inspections. Um, he is going to kind of walk us through what home inspections look like while we're in the midst of all this crazy COVID, um, you know, whatnot. So Jim, thank you for joining me today. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Um, so, you know, home inspection is one of those things where you are having to go around, you're, you're touching doors, you are looking in places, um, you know, it requires a lot of physical touch. So how are you going about home inspections during this time? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a time not only for COVID-19, which is where everybody's focused right now, but also influenza and, you know, about a thousand other allergens that are out there that can cause bronchitis, et cetera. So, you know, home inspectors really have to be cognizant of what they're doing and making sure that we're doing whatever we can um, to, re to reduce or, or mitigate the chances of spreading, you know, any of my germs to the house or taking any germs from the house, you know, back to me and my my tools and then back to my house so um so there's a couple of, of things that you know um, people can do uh, there's there's um some different schools of thought on wearing masks okay. um, you know, if you wear a mask you i mean literally you want to wear a new mask every time and that can be a little difficult right now because masks are in short supply and there are a lot of them there to being diverted to uh the medical field and you know could you, could you do you need like the the heavy duty N95 mask or just anything that'll kind of give you some sort of protection if you want to go that route. If you want to go that route, I mean, you really want to have an N95 mask. Um, there's a lot of, um, there's some studies that I've already seen that show that, you know, if you're wearing, you know, just your homemade mask, um, that can be very good for allergens and pollen, but it's not really going to do much for um, the COVID-19 a virus. So, and again, there's some different schools of thought in there. There's also some different schools of thought on wearing gloves. Now I have gloves and I will wear them if I am asked, but you know, if I'm touching a lot of different surfaces and then I'm touching my, my iPad because most of my home inspection is visual and I'm touching my iPad and I'm making notes and, and taking pictures for the report, et cetera. So, um, so, and, you know, as I'm touching, you know, my phone and my iPad, which my, you know, and then touching other things and then touch back, that, that can be a transfer area as well. So, you know, again, different schools of thoughts on gloves and masks, but there are things that we can do, not only as home inspectors, but as sellers and realtors to mitigate, um, you know, the chance, you know, uh, the chance of, of spreading viruses back right. and forth. The first one I like is Lysol that lockbox. Absolutely. You know, yep. Nice yeah, a lot of people are touching that lockbox. You think not just the home inspector, the realtor, mm -hmm. like yourself, the termite guy, uh, you know, the radon guy, you know, every realtor who answers, you know, they're all touching the lockbox and they're all touching those keys. Right. The one thing I like to do when I'm all said and done, spray the lockbox, give it a little blast with Lysol. Lysol is a little bit hard to come by nowadays. I get that. Um, but you know, you can do this today. You can do this a year, five years, 10 years down the road. Right. When you're, and you don't have to soak the lockbox. You don't have to soak the keys. Just give it a quick spritz done that way. Do you do that prior to going in or do you just do it at the end of it? Both? Uh, yeah. But if I was going to pick one or the other, when I leave, okay. right. I've already touched the keys. I've already touched the lockbox. So when I'm all done, spritz the keys because keys, like keys are all like credit cards. They can carry a lot of germs. And they almost never get disinfected. Right. But, Give us quick spritz inside and quick spritz outside. You don't have to soak it and then leave. Remember, Lysol is a disinfectant. So you want to spray it on, just leave it. Right. right? Yeah. With Lysol and then wiping it off, eh, you didn't do much. Right. Like, yeah. Because that's one thing I noticed, especially um, when all of this hit and I was looking at my Lysol bottle, just it'll tell you that sometimes it needs to sit on there. It needs to air dry for five minutes, 10 minutes. So yeah, it's it's not just a spray and wipe like regular cleaners. Just give it a little blast and then be on your way, you know? So that's good. So that's the one. I saw the, box. the next one is going to sound kind of funny, but I wear a glove on my non-dominant hand. Okay. So you'll see me walking around a home inspection like this. And the reason for this, this is the hand that if I'm going to accidentally touch my face or scratch my chin or something, I'm usually going to use my dominant hand. This is also the hand that I'm going to be, you know, getting on my phone or getting on my iPad and touching my iPad. 
you know, I had to train my brain to do this. The reason I wear the glove on the non-dominant hand is number one, to remind me, hey, use this hand. But I'm gonna use this hand to turn on light switches and to open doors. Because then the hand that's touching my phone and touching uh, my iPad a lot is not the hand that I'm going to be using to open doors and turn on light switches. So there's much less of a skin, number one, a skin to uh, surface transfer, right? But also transfer of germs that may be living on my iPad, even though I disinfect that every single day, um, just less chance. Um, so I use this hand a lot. So if you see me walking around, you know, home inspections, like I'm not doing the Michael Jackson routine. I'm actually, you know, wearing this to remind me, use this hand. You know, because this is the hand, if I have to cough, your dominant hand is going to be the one you instinctively put in front of your face, right? Yep. Um, or like I said, touch your head. You have long hair, so I imagine a couple times a day you're putting your hair behind your ear. Normal, completely normal. <laughs> so I use this hand. It's a reminder. Hey, use this hand. And so I use that to, to you know, flip on light switches and to open, when you know, I try to open windows as much as I can, open doors, etc. You know, it's a good thing for realtors, too, because... As I'm inspecting the house, you're showing the house. Right. You're going to be the one that's turning on those light switches and showing the light, showing the fans, you know, opening the doors. Hey, look at this closet. Look at this pantry, et cetera. So it's something that realtors can do as well. But I mean, and that also goes back to what you were saying with your, your thoughts on wearing gloves. So, you know, if you're touching dirty keys and then you're taking those gloves and touching the light switches, touching the doorknob there is that transfer that happens all around the house. So doing it as like having one hand free, one hand gloved, you're right. cutting down on that kind of transfer. Yeah, because if I, if when I open the door with the key, I'm using my dominant hand. Mm -hmm. If I use my other hand, it might take me a while. I'm using <laughs> yeah. hand, yeah. So that's good. The next one is really for sellers. And I really encourage this for sellers. And this is something that realtors and especially home inspectors should do. Wash your hands when you first go into the house. Now, my first hour of an inspection, I'm usually outside. I'm inspecting right. the roof and the gutters and the grounds and the exterior and all that. But then when I go inside, most home inspectors will start at the kitchen. That's mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, ground zero. And then we work. You, have a home. you work your way out from there. So and, and some of them will do a counterclockwise pattern, you know, downstairs and then go upstairs and do their counterclockwise or counterclockwise, whatever works. But when you first go into a house, wash your hands. Right. Because then I'm starting with clean hands when I'm in the, in the house. Right. So I would encourage sellers, even if you move out of the house, leave some paper towels and leave some hand soap at the sink so that anybody coming in the house can wash their hands when they're starting the inspection or starting the showing and then wash their hands when they're all said and done. You know, I'm starting out with clean hands and I'm leaving with clean hands. So it should be. Yeah. So, you know, because again, see, we do this um, just by habit. Um, mm -hmm. So sellers, don't be offended if you come home and find that somebody, hey, was washing their hands and threw, you know, a, a paper towel in your trash can. You know, um, they're trying to keep their hands clean. It's a kind of a show of they're respecting your house and, you know, trying to do what they can to mitigate, you know, spreading germs. So, Absolutely. yeah. And the last thing, something that's real easy when you when you show a house, um, we turn on we turn on everything. We turn on all the lights. We turn mm -hmm. on um, the uh, ceiling fans, yep. you know, you open up the curtains so that it's lighter in there. I encourage sellers, get your house ready for the home inspection. Turn on all the lights. It's less that I have to do. It's less that I have to be in touch with surfaces in your house. Um, open up the blinds and the windows, especially the blinds that move up and down on their own. So because you can I, open up the windows. I have to do that. I have to do a representative amount of doors, a representative amount of receptacles and a representative amount of windows, right? So if I have to move your blinds up, more surfaces that I'm touching, then I've got to check the window and then I'm going to be a nice guy and I'm going to put the blinds back down how I found them. Right. right? So move that stuff up out of the way so it's just less that I have to come in contact with. People have, um, it's very common to baby proof your house, even if you don't have babies, right? You take these little- um, You can have dogs. And if you have dogs, you plastic gadgets and stick them in the light sockets, right? Mm -hmm. I've got to check the light sockets. So before the home inspection, go around, take all of those out because then I don't have to touch your property. And you I even have a pre home inspection checklist for people to go through so that, cause I mean, you even mentioning just the little plugs that go into sockets, that's not even something that would probably be on somebody's radar. They wouldn't even think about it. Right. So um, that's an outlet with my tester. 
to make right. sure that it's good, right? And then I'm going to have to put that plastic thing back in for you. So now I've touched it twice. Whereas if you take it out, put them all together, I come in, chances are my hand's going to be on this. I'm not even going to touch the surface of your outlet, mm -hmm. you know? So again, it's like, and then when you come back home, you can put them all back in. Your house is, is safe. And it's just less that I've, you know, less services that I've touched in your house. You know, and again, if you do all of these things together, it's also going to speed up the, speed up the inspection. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's going to be a little more safe when it comes to the transfer of COVID-19 um, or like I said, influenza or anything else, any other respiratory things that might be in the house that can affect me or anything that I'm bringing in the house as a home inspector. Absolutely. And um, I know that you took a COVID-19 home inspector class. I did. So is there anything outside of the already great tips that you've given us that you that you also found noteworthy or that were some good takeaways from it? Uh, the big thing is that if you feel sick, you know, uh, either cancel the inspection, um, change the date, or maybe pass it on to another inspector, right? If I know that I'm sick, you know, if I'm coughing, et cetera, you know, it's just not a smart business idea to go into somebody's house and be spreading all of those germs. You know, everything else that was in that course really are things that we've learned from the news, right? It's kind of like taking all of the things that they've talked about on the news and kind of compiling them into one. And they've talked about some of this other stuff about whether or not you should or should not wear, you know, gloves and a mask, use your non-dominant hand for turning on things, et cetera. But the big thing is if you're feeling sick, it's kind of like a, if you're a realtor, you know, and you're coughing and you're feeling oh. under the weather and you have a fever, probably not the best day to be showing houses to your clients. No, oh, absolutely. Right? Um, and I, I mean, I just, I think, I mean, I'm, I'm not a big watcher of the news cause I just can't take all of the negativity in. So it doesn't affect me, but I do try and like get the, at least get some numbers and some facts to follow. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that's really good. And then going back to that pre-inspection checklist, like whether we're in COVID-19 times or when we're out of them, what are things like what's on that checklist for people? What should they be thinking about in terms of even just prepping their home, regardless of what, what, you know, state of the world that we're in? Like, what are those things? Well, you got to think that anything wrong with your house, I have to write down. Right. So yeah. you know, go out there and take a look at the outside of your house when you're when, you know, before the home inspection, clean out your gutters. You know, because if they're full of debris, I'm going to put it on my checklist. That's just or on my report. That's just one more deficiency that will be on the report. Um, if you have downspouts, make sure they're connected because if the downspout is disconnected and just laying there, I'm going to mark it down as a deficiency. You know, um, move things away off your patio so that I don't have, again, there's less things that I have to touch. But I, you just take a look at the outside of your house and see, is there anything in there that I need to that I need to fix. And then you go on the inside of your house and do the same thing. Do I have light bulbs that are out? You know, uh, when was the last? You need access to things as well. You need access to things. Yeah, I'm gonna access everything. You know, I've got to get in the attic. Have, like, big boxes stacked in front of like the door to like a water heater. You're not gonna be moving those boxes out of the way. Like those people need to go ahead and move them. Yes. I mean, move things away from like the electrical panel. I have mm -hmm. to inspect it. And some home inspectors, if they can't get to it, they're not even going to try. Right. They'll mark down that they did not inspect it. And then if the buyer wants them to come back, they're going to charge for it. Right. And charge the seller. It, was, it wasn't the, it wasn't the, the buyer's fault that there was a bunch of stuff stacked in front of, you know, this, that, or what have you. So like, again, it's just a matter of get your home ready for inspection. And then, and again, like we were just talking about, um, I mean, I, I think it's even a good practice for sellers when they are prepping the home. Um, like you said, think about the little things that you would have to touch, like the light sockets. Um, but even if they go ahead and just do a nice clean, a nice sanitation of the home when you walk in, again, it's just another layer of protection because, you know, I know that it's, it's kind of widely known that this, Thing, unfortunately is can you know highly contagious so um, just anything that we can do to make this process as safe as possible for you for the sellers and we also want the buyers to get a full-blown report so that they have a good grasp on what it is that they're buying and if they do want to move forward with that purchase that's right I mean 
you know, it could be little things like if you have a cracked or broken wall plate on an outlet, you know, they're a dollar at the store, put a new one on. <laughs> it just, it, those little things save a lot of time. Walking through, if you see it, I'm going to see it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> see it and can correct it now, then I don't have to put it on a report because there are some times when I will do a report and I'll be quite honest that I've looked at 75, 80 things and I have found 50 deficiencies. Now the deficiencies are all tiny and it's more like a laundry list of things to do. But for some, you know, first time home buyers, when they see that 50, they're scared and they might walk away from the deal. And my, my job is not to pass or fail our house or certainly not for people to walk away from the deal. Right, it's right. Just a list. These are the things that I see. So if a seller gets their house ready for inspection, you kind of fix all those little things. They're just, they make that number go down, 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 down. And then, you know, when the seller or when the buyer looks at the report, they're like, okay, these are things that I can handle. And Absolutely. everything goes through much better. So Absolutely. Well, Jim, um, is there anything else that you want to add that we didn't touch on before we wrap up here? I think we're good. I think you just use a little common sense. You know, don't be afraid of the home inspection. Right. You know, it's brand new construction. You should never skip a oh, uh, never I, skip home inspection when it's brand new construction. No, that's a, I'm a big proponent with I've done a lot of new construction deals, always making sure you can get that third party inspection because not to say that builders are trying to cut corners, it's just they're trying to get the home done and sold. And so it's just making sure that it's um they didn't skip anything. I know that that's really important. Absolutely. And Jim, where can people find you to follow you or to, you know, if they want to book a, you know, pre-listing home inspection? Um, you know, there's, um, you can find me on galaxyinspection.com. Okay. Made it simple. Just galaxyinspection.com. I'm on Facebook under Jim Rudiger. I also have a galaxy inspection page. Yep. Uh, and one thing that I do for, for people that are thinking about doing a, uh, putting their house up on the market, mm -hmm. I do called a walk and talk and it's only it's half price i always knock off 50 percent of the price of a home inspection um, because i don't do a report but i will walk through with a, a homeowner and we'll check everything that i would normally check on a report but i do it for half the cost so that you can just make a list of all of the things that i think yeah you might want to might want to address this issue and that issue um, you can save yourself a lot of money and you can also probably you know Get, get better offers on the other side. So. Right, it does. You no, know, I, I, I was about to say that it, it helps give you more confidence going into the selling process because you already have a really good idea of what's going to come back. And um, it just kind of gives you a little bit more leverage when it comes to negotiating. That's right. That's right. All right, Jim, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, if anyone has any questions, obviously you can just drop them below and we will uh, go back and answer them. But again, Jim, thank you. And um, I am back tomorrow with um, an awesome motivational speaker named Brittany talking about how to navigate your mindset during this time. So that's going to be awesome. But again, I hope that everyone has a wonderful Monday and I will see you tomorrow.